Okay, so all limit questions like this, you really should start with direct substitution. Hope that you get an answer, but more than likely, you're going to get indeterminate form like 0 over 0. Have to do some work, but then you still finish with direct substitution. But always try direct substitution at first. So if I plug 1 into this, I would get 0. And if I plug 1 into this, I get 0. So 0 over 0 is one of our indeterminate forms. Now, if you want to, I don't know if I'd recommend it on this question, but you could do L'Hopital's rule. If you remember what that is, it gives you an option on how to solve this question. Just because this uh, numerator doesn't have a very nice derivative, I don't know that that's what I would do. But this 0 over 0, this is the first real problem in calculus that you guys learn how to tackle. We wanted to direct substitute and just get an answer, but that's not always the case. So we've got to think of a way to make this look different without changing its size. So the most common way to do that is with factoring, which I think is what happens in question four. Sometimes you need trig identities. Very rarely you need uh, complex fractions. But basically any math way to rewrite this is something that you should consider. So specifically in this one, just based on the square root here, I think this is probably a conjugate question. So I really want to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. But to do that, be careful and make sure that you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So this way it's like I'm multiplying by 1. And it is kind of messy. But when we multiply our numerators together and FOIL these, the first part of FOIL is 1 times 1. The outer part of FOIL is going to be the square root of 2x squared minus 1, but then the inner part of FOIL is going to be minus the square root of 2x squared minus 1, so those are always going to cancel. Anytime you multiply something by its conjugate, the outer and inners cancel, and you can skip that. And then what happens when I multiply negative square root of 2x squared minus 1 times positive square root of 2x squared minus 1? Very good. Make sure you distribute the negative. Square root of 2x squared minus 1 times square root of 2x squared minus 1 would be 2x squared minus 1. But positive times negative means the whole thing is negative. So either put parentheses or just distribute. It's not a, it's not a minus 1, it's a plus 1. Okay, down here we've got an x squared times this conjugate that we had. Now, you can try direct substitution again whenever you feel like it, but until something cancels, you're still going to get 0 over 0. Um, I don't know. So up here, I guess I would try to combine like terms. I anticipate that somehow I'm supposed to get an x minus 1 out of this so that it can cancel out with this x minus 1. But that's not something that you can just instantly do here. Um, I guess we could factor out a negative 2. Okay, do you think I'm on the right track or do I need to start over? Does it look like something's going to cancel anytime soon? Good. How does this factor? Okay, so difference of two squares. So I needed these to cancel, and then the second you get something to cancel, it's probably not in indeterminate form any anymore. So try plugging this back in again. You get negative 2 times 2 over 1 plus the square root of 2 times 1 squared minus 1, which would be the square root of 1. So I would say that all of that should come out to be negative 2. Okay, and that's correct. 
So a couple things there. One, you need to know why I did all of that because of zero over zero. Secondly, you need to know that sometimes multiplying by a conjugate is the best approach. I'm not saying it made the question quick or unmessy, but it is pretty reliable. Okay, any follow-up to this number five before we move on? Now, of course, I'm not going to say this about every single question, but this is true about every single question. If you feel like you need to practice this more for the arithmetic part, I'm sure I had linked um, some Khan Academy where you could do that. I'm sure there's a Khan Academy that just practices those one skill, so you're more than welcome to do that. But if this part, remembering that you could multiply by the conjugate like that to start, if that's just not what you considered, then you know highlight that question and force yourself to think about it again just in case um, it shows up on the final.